Hi, this is Tom from ZeroDefinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through obstructive sleep apnea. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroDefinals.com slash sleep apnea or in the respiratory section of the Zero Definals medicine book. Let's jump straight in. Obstructive sleep apnea is caused by collapse of the pharyngeal airway during sleep. And it's characterized by apneic episodes during sleep where the person will stop breathing periodically for up to a few minutes. And this is usually reported by the partner as the patient is unaware of these episodes. There's a few risk factors for developing obstructive sleep apnea. These are being middle-aged, male, obese, drinking excessive alcohol, and smoking. So if you see a combination of these features in your exams, think about obstructive sleep apnea. How do patients present? Well, often the apneic episodes during sleep are reported by their partner. They might come in complaining of snoring. Patients often have a morning headache and they wake up feeling unrefreshed from sleep. Then a key feature is daytime sleepiness and concentration problems. And when we check the patient during their sleep, they have reduced oxygen saturations throughout the night. Severe cases can cause hypertension, heart failure, and can increase the risk of having myocardial infarction or stroke. Here's a quick Tom tip for you. If you're interviewing someone that you suspect has obstructive sleep apnea, ask them about daytime sleepiness and their occupation. Daytime sleepiness is a key feature that should make you think about obstructive sleep apnea. And patients that need to be fully alert for work, for example if they're driving heavy goods vehicles, they require urgent referrals and may need amended work duties while they're waiting for assessment and initiating treatment. How do we manage patients with obstructive sleep apnea? The first step is to do a referral to an ENT specialist or a specialist sleep clinic where they can perform sleep studies. This involves the patient sleeping in a laboratory while staff monitor their oxygen saturations, their heart rate, respiratory rate, breathing, and trying to establish any apnea episodes and the extent of their snoring. The first step in management is to correct reversible risk factors. So this is to advise them to stop drinking alcohol, to stop smoking and losing weight. The next step is to use a continuous positive airway pressure or a CPAP machine that provides continuous pressure into the airway that helps to maintain the airway and keep the airway open so that they can breathe normally and it doesn't collapse and cause apnea. The final option is surgery and this involves quite significant surgical restructuring of the soft palate and the jaw. And the most common procedure is called a uvulopalatopharyngeoplasty or a UPPP. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, left a comment or subscribe to the channel, thank you so much, it really helps. Zero to Finals is not just a YouTube channel, there's also a website with detailed notes, illustrations and questions, an Instagram account where new questions are posted every day to help you test your knowledge, books, flashcards and much more. I also have a personal channel where I share my thoughts and tips on learning medicine and you can find links to everything in the description of this video. See you next time.